All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pick up where we uh, where we left off last class. So we're doing uh, we're doing rigid bodies, relative motion analysis, and right now we're focused on velocities, right? And we're uh, we're going to now start looking at various rigid bodies and different points in the rigid body, just to see how well we understand what it means to calculate all the kinematics of these more complex objects, right? So the next one is, uh, and this one's a really, really important one, because we, we have lots and lots of examples in the textbook and usually in our exams in past, in past years, where it's pretty much all on the rolling wheel. So I think this is a really, really important concept. Um, and specifically, we're talking about a rolling wheel without slip, okay? And this word without slip is actually critical. It means that um, when this wheel, wheel rolls, that there is static friction specifically at the point C. It means that that static friction is not allowing the, um, the surface of the wheel to rub against the table in this case. Because we all know that if it's dynamic friction, you're allowed to do this, right? Dynamic friction is the wheel and the table and the two surfaces rubbing against each other. That's when you use mu k. Mu s is when, if there's no rubbing, uh, the problem is if you had like a, a, a table and it's not, it's not going to slide, what does it do if it doesn't slide? It's going to tip, potentially tip over because um, one of the legs is caught on the surface and there's no, there's no slip. So that's exactly what's happening to the wheel, except instead of tipping over, like a big box tipping over, when a wheel tips over, it just rolls. It's almost like tipping over at every single instantaneous point on the edge of the circle, right? And so this is a really interesting problem, but what that means is right at this point, we know something that happens with, this, with, the, with the static friction. We're gonna get to that in a second. We also know that if we want to study this rigid body, we want to know velocity of many, many points. So the goal here is if I tell you, for instance, that a car is moving with this wheel and that the axis of the car is moving at 90 kilometers per hour, and I give you the radius of the wheel, find velocities at five different points on the wheel. Okay? So I've shown you A is the center of the wheel, and then B, C, D, and E are all on the edge, but at different points. Okay? So one thing that you have to note, if the wheel was rolling with slip and it was just turning around this way, right? So it was just rotating like this, right? Then all of us, uh, obviously B, E, C, D, everything on the edge, it would be traveling around in a perfect circle, right? But when it's traveling without slip, as soon as the C sort of tips over, right? The D has moved off to a higher point. It might replace B somewhere over here. B is moved down a little bit. E is moved further down here. But they've also all moved forward. So the path of each of these points is actually much more complex. It's not a circle at all. It's a curved path. Right? And at each and every single instance, we want a velocity vector associated with that point. Okay. okay. So having said that, what we can do is we can start with the simplest points in terms of uh, the analysis. So what do we know? First of all, we know that VA is the velocity that happens to be right at the wheel axis. Okay. So if the car is traveling with 90 kilometers an hour, we expect this to also be 90 kilometers per hour. Okay, and by the way, 90 kilometers per hour is our 25 meters per second. Okay. And there's one really important point about point A. For all rolling wheels, as long as it's the perfect circle and it's a rolling wheel, A, where it's at the axis, this is the only point in the entire wheel where its motion and its path is a straight line. So it follows rectilinear motion then. In other words, as the wheel is rolling down this, uh, this straight uh, surface, A is the only one that is always exactly one radius above the ground. Okay? So we know a few things. We know that VA has to be 25 meters per second, and we know that it has to be in the positive I direction. We know that point A is the only point of rolling wheel.
that travels in a straight line. Okay. So we already know right away what VA is. The next thing is uh, of all the other points, the easiest one is VC. I just told you that VC is the point where it makes contact with the surface, that it's stuck because of static friction. It causes the wheel to roll and tip over. And because of that, C actually has to be 0. Okay? So I know it seems kind of odd to you because clearly the whole wheel is moving to the right. But at every single instant in time, as long as the wheel is rolling, whenever you're looking at the point that is in contact with the surface, right at that point, only in that instant in time, VC has to be 0 meters per second. Okay? Now having, yes, question? That's what we're going to get at right now, okay? And I'll show you that they're not the same, okay? So, uh, and how and how do we do this? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you almost the same analysis that I did with the slender rod last class, right? And then I'm gonna use cross products to tell you what all the velocities are. Okay. Okay. So last class, you'll remember. We use this. We said that if you happen to know two velocities on a rigid body, so for instance, if I happen to know VA and I happen to know VC, right, I can subtract them in a vector form and I can divide it by RA with respect to C, the magnitude of that. And just based on the fact that V is equal to omega R, at least for the, the relative part of the motion, right? That we can use this equation to calculate an unknown omega, right? So I made a big deal about it with the slender rod and two velocities. So we can actually do that now because I know two velocities. I know a and c, and that was the trick: was that I didn't know any of the five to begin with, but I found two of the easier ones to do, figured them out, and then now I can do this. I can say that va has to be 25i. Vc is 0i, okay? And so RAC must be the distance between A and C. It's just one radius. So it has to be 0 0.275 meters. And so omega is 90.9 .9 radians per second, okay? So just with that alone, I figured out omega and what happens after omega. As soon as you know omega, now all I need to do is figure out omega times r for any other position on the wheel. So now, can use omega to find all other velocities. Okay, and I'll start with the the easiest one first, easiest one now, the, out of the remaining three, is actually VB, because it's right above A and C, right at the top of the wheel. OK, so rolling wheel, general motion, because it's not just translating and not just rotating, it's doing both at the same time. We know that when it's general motion, you have to write the relative motion equation with respect to something you already know. Okay. It just so happens that we know two potential velocities. So I will use, in this case, VA. And then I know that this is going to be added to my VB with respect to A. Okay, so that's just my relative motion equation. And I can write this then as VA plus omega cross RBA. Same equation we've been working with the whole time. And now I know every one of these things. So I can write this as 25i. I can add that to my omega that I just found. By the way, it's 90.9, .9, and it looks like the wheel is going clockwise. right? So this has to be negative 90.9k .9 radians per second cross with my RBA. 
So an arrow that goes straight up and looks to me like it's 0.275J meters. Okay. And so that should be 25I. And that multiplied by that is minus 25, but k cross j is negative i. Okay, and so this becomes positive 50i meter per second. Okay, and this is VB. Okay, so very interesting result. Let me do a quick summary. If I looked at this wheel, and I drew a slender rod as if the slender rod was replacing the middle part of that wheel. And I called the bottom part C and the middle part A and the top part B. This is exactly like the slender rod that I did last class. The bottom is zero. The middle in this case is 25 meters per second. And the top is twice as fast, 50 meters per second. It's doing the exact same pattern as I did for the slender rod. It's going to form this nice linear relationship where all of the velocities above the point C is going to be pointing horizontally, right? And it's going to be related to how far it is away from C. OK? OK, now, if you don't believe me, we can actually calculate VB using another point. So I'm going to leave that on the board for a second, just a picture. Okay, so another way to do it, you can even do this. So VB, let's just say you didn't like to start with VA because you already know VC, you could do this too. VC plus VB with respect to C, right? That makes perfect sense. It's still relative motion analysis, except VC we found was 0. And if I calculate this, this would be omega cross RBC. And notice what happens here. This will be negative 90.9K and cross B to C is twice as far as A to C. So this is now uh, 2 times 0.275, okay? And the end result, it's still 50i, okay? So you get the same result starting with a different point that you knew, okay? So I did the calculation in two ways. Okay, so let's move on now to the last two points. So let's do VD. Okay, so VD, uh, I have in my notes here, I actually picked starting from VA again. So let's do that. VA plus, and now I'm starting to go a little faster. Let's not write out the equation that we already know. We know for sure that it has to be that form. VA plus omega cross RDA. OK, and then now let me look at where my D point is. So I did D point with respect to A, and I told you that theta was 30 degrees on the previous board. And so now I'm looking at making sure I figure out what my RD with respect to A is. That's my RD with respect to A. So this would be 25i plus negative 90.9 and then cross with RDA. That has to be, let me just double check here. So I have negative 0.275 sine of theta i. And it's pointing up. So it's plus 0.275 cosine 30j. That is my RDA vector. Carry out your cross products in here, plus 12.5j, 
plus 21.65i. Okay, and there's your answer, 46.7i, 12.5j, okay? So, looking at this vector, clearly it has both i and j components. You can even try to draw the vector on the diagram. And what you're going to find is that with that particular i and j, it's actually pointing off in this direction, 90 degrees not 90 degrees to that, but it's going to point off in this direction like that. That's my VD, like that, right? And as an interesting note, where, which line is it perpendicular to? You'll find that it is actually perpendicular to a line that cuts through point C, okay? okay. And so it's actually got 90 degrees that. Okay? Did I see a hand go up there for a second? Or no? We good? Okay, any questions on that? No? How do I know that? Okay, so I'm gonna, I wanted to give you the answer to E first before I did that, but let me, let me go over the details behind this for one second here. So there's my D point, right? So I, I want to I actually point back to the line above the line that I boxed, okay? Because this, this is a pretty important line. You'll note that um, I actually have two parts of the solution. Remember this VA part? And I told you before that that was translation, okay? And this translation is represented by the 25i. And I told you that this whole part had to be then the rotation, right? And so that whole part was this component right here, those two parts, okay? And this I was com com combining this I with that I. And what is the significance of that? The significance of that is if this wheel were spinning about the axis and this was the center of rotation, clearly the omega r is that there's a velocity d that should be 90 degrees to this line, right? And this velocity should have been VD with respect to A, with respect to this point. Everyone agree with me on that? So what happened was, even though this D was rotating, and this was the velocity tangent to the curve, not only was it rotating, but the whole wheel tipped forward and translated at 25i. So not, not only was this, so this is VDA, it means that if I broke this up into two components, one that went straight up, one that went across, now I have to add an extra 25 on the I part, and the entire vector actually looks like this, okay? So VD as an absolute vector is now moving not off in the tangent of the 30 degrees, it's like charging ahead faster so its angle is lower. You see, you see what I'm getting at? Okay, so how did I know that it was 90 degrees to this? It's because this point and this point, this point was still velocity is equal to zero. And what does that mean? Right at that instant in time, this had no velocity. So this was the point that the entire wheel is pivoting around. This is like my axis of rotation, right? So this is my axis of rotation. This is my final vector. This line, represents my radius of rotation. And so this is my 90 degrees, right? Really interesting, right? And I can do the math another way. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um,
Let me show you what happens if you decide that you want to do C instead. So let's use point C instead. Okay, remember how I said you could do either point as long as you know what the velocity is? So I could easily have done this. VD is VC plus omega cross RD with respect to C. With the advantage that my VC, I told you, was 0. And now the only challenge is finding this RDC. What is that RDC? That RDC is this is my C. This is my A, this is my D, and RDC is the line that I drew above that I said was my rotating line, right? Like that, that's my RDC. And now you have to do a bit of trigonometry, right? So if this is 30 degrees right there, this is like an isosceles triangle, right? So this is an R right there, this is an R. Right? And I can tell you that then this, if this is 30, this part right here has to be 150. That's the big obtuse angle of the triangle. And then you're left with 15 here and 15 here. OK? Right? And then you can continue on. So imagine this part right here. Let me give you a new letter, F, right? So I could say then that if this is my new letter, F, and these are my right angles, then df length is equal to the length of fc. Those are the two parts of the triangle. And that each of these has to be like the hypotenuse, r times a cosine of 15 degrees. Right? And so the entire length then, if you did that, it would be r d with respect to c must be equal to 2 times one of the legs, right? And I can tell you that this is 0 0.531 meters, right? OK, so if you did all that work, why? I can then say VD is my same 90.9K radians per second cross with this guy. So that says, uh, let me just make sure I got this right, but it would be. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Effectively cross with, let's see, sine 15, so 0 0.531 sine of 15 degrees in the negative i plus 0 0.531 cosine of 15 to the positive j. And that's just to prove to you that you would get the exact same answer. 12.5 J meters per second. OK? And that proves everything. It proves that this is the line in which D is rotating about. The entire rigid body is rotating about that point. That point has huge significance because it has zero velocity. And it matches all of the other math that I did too. OK? OK. Final point, VE. So now it should be really easy, right? And I, you can even, again, you can pick any point you want now. I've stuck with A. And E is an interesting one because it's all the way on the side there. So uh, you actually know omega and you know the R. It's actually really easy. So 25i, same as the VA, I'm going to add that to 90.9k with a negative. Cross, looks like my REA has to be 0.275i. Okay. 25i and minus. 25j. Okay. So if I draw the circle again, looks like that. And 
the rotation part, because the wheel was rotating this way, was actually straight down. It was the component VE with respect to A going straight down 25J, but again, the whole wheel translated and moved forward 25I, like that. And so the ultimate vector VE is like the point E moves completely in this direction at a 45 degree angle. Okay? Okay. Hope that makes sense. I think the key thing there is um, it's a lot of really nuanced aspects to the to the physical meaning of, of that rolling wheel. Just the, the whole breaking apart of the translation and the rotation part, being able to combine them and realizing that what's what seems to be a point that should be moving in a circle is also moving forward because the whole thing is translating. Right? Okay. So let's do another example. So I have an incline, 25 degree incline. And I have a vertical rod, the collar. Okay. And I have another slender rod. Okay, that's attached to the collar and also sliding along the ground there. And it's sliding along the ground at point A. This initially makes an angle of 50 degrees. And the length of the rod is LAB. Okay, so here's the scenario. The slender rod is, uh, again, sliding along this incline, and this collar has the ability to slide up and down the rod. Think of it as frictionless. It doesn't matter at this point. And so when the, when the collar is moving up at a velocity VB 1.5J, so this is my VB, okay, you're going to expect this rod to slide up the incline and do sort of like this kind of motion. And so it's a rigid body, it's got two points on it, and it seems to be translating and rotating at the same time. And we're interested in knowing its angular velocity omega AB, and specifically the vector, the velocity vector at A. Okay? Okay. So how do we go about solving this problem? So the first thing is this velocity vector at A, there's one extra clue, and that is this point A is not going to lift up off the surface. We're going to assume that point A is sliding right along the incline. So VA actually has a direction that we know of. Okay. So you seem to know everything about B. And then we want to know what kind of unknowns we have. So let's set this up using relative motion. Typically, we would write this cross RA with respect to B. Okay. So here's the issue. The issue is we seem to know the direction of A. We know that. But we actually don't know magnitude of A. So we're missing one piece of information. We know uh, both 
direction and magnitude of VB. Okay. And we know the entire vector RAB, but with this thing right here, the angular velocity, we obviously know the direction because it's k, right? But we don't know its magnitude. That's what we're being asked to find. So those are our two unknowns. We don't know the magnitude of the angular velocity. We don't know the magnitude of VA, but we happen to know more directions than we know magnitudes. So somehow we have two unknowns. And we need two equations. Okay. And where do we find those equations? We find them buried in the components of i and j. Meaning if the left hand side and the right hand side have to be equal to each other, then we can break them up into x and y components and make sure that the x's match and the y's match. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say that VA, I initially know, don't know the magnitude VA, but I know that its direction has to be a cosine and a sine. It has to be cosine 25i plus VA sine 25j. Uh, just make sure I got a degree symbol there. And then here's my right hand side. My right hand side is telling me I know my VB entirely, 1.5j straight up meter per second. I'll leave the units off. And then I know the following. I know that it's going to be added to an unknown magnitude omega ab. And I'll give it a k. Right? So I, I'm even assuming a direction of rotation. And it doesn't matter. So let me just do y, x, and positive rotation that way. Okay, so omega a, b, k, and then I want to cross it with my r. And what's my r vector? r vector is a from b. So it's actually pointing from the collar downward. And so it has to be, let me give myself a little bit more room here, plus uh, omega a, b, k cross, pointing down so it's negative both ways, at least it should be. Let me see here, R, A, B, yep. So we're going to do cross with L, A, B of, uh, what is that, sine 50. OK, and that looks like a negative I minus L, A, B. Cosine 50 j. Okay. okay. Any any questions so far? Am I am I good? Everyone agree with the math? Okay. Okay, so once you've set that up, what that means is now you equate all the i's together and all the j's together. And those are your two separate equations. We can actually say that VA cosine of 25 in the i direction is the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, what are my i's? My i's are when the k crosses the j. So this has to be equal to k cross j is negative omega a b l a b cosine 50. And then your j. Your j is v a sine 25. And it's equal to a 1.5 plus, it's the one that's k cross i that gives you positive j. So this is a negative a b l a b sine 50 degrees.
Okay. So it looks to me like I can move this over to here and then plug that into here and you can just solve it. Solve. And I'll spare you the math. It's just omega AB is 1.17 radians per second counterclockwise. VA is 0.90I. And with those two equations, you can simultaneously solve the two unknowns, and you have both the velocity and the angular velocity of the rod. Okay? Okay, so that's just another, another trick. Any questions on that? You're going to be doing that a lot. There's going to be a lot of those types of cases where you have these two unknowns and either you know direction or you know magnitude without direction or something or other and you're going to be forced to solve multiple equations at once. Okay, let's see if I can cover one more quick topic here. And this one uh, it's great. I've got 10 minutes left and it brings us back to the rolling wheel for a second. Um, but it's pretty important because this one is 16.6 uh, in your textbook. And the chapter section is called Instantaneous Center of Zero Velocity. Okay. Okay, let's bring us back to the rolling wheel for a second. Everyone remember my point C that I just talked about? Point C was the point no slip with the surface, static friction, and I told you very specifically that VC was zero for a no slip. Okay? And I told you that at that particular moment in time, the entire rigid body is pivoting around C. This point C actually has a very specific name and a concept. It is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. That's, that's all it is. But every single rigid body has an instantaneous center. Okay? So I'm going to first make a note here. C in my rolling wheel example is what I call an IC, instantaneous center of zero velocity velocity. And the key thing to note here is that all rigid bodies that rotate or have a general motion with a part of it that rotates has an IC. Okay. And I think the reason why I wanted to end this lecture talking about this very quickly is because I wanted to bring us back to the answer that I got for the rolling wheel. And I wanted to just say how, how easy it was to find certain points when I was measuring everything from C because VC happened to be zero and it was just gone all the time, right? And that's pretty, pretty interesting. So I did my VA, right? And I said it was moving 25 meters per second. And then at the very top here, it was moving like this, right? So that's my VB, I believe, right? Uh, so those were two vectors moving horizontal. And then I had a D. And I also told you that my D, if I drew a line from the C to my D, it was giving me a vector that was 90 degrees to that. The one vector I hadn't drawn yet was my E vector. My E vector was on, over here on the right-hand side of the wheel. And what, where, where, was it, where, was it, uh, where was the vector pointing to? It was pointing in this direction, 45 degrees downward. And guess where the perpendicular line was crossing? It crossed through C as well. 
In fact, every single velocity vector on this rotating wheel has a perpendicular line, and that perpendicular line crosses through the instantaneous center. Okay, so all velocity vectors have a perpendicular line passing through the IC. Okay. And that makes a lot of calculations and a lot of problems a whole lot easier. So let me bring up another a new example. Okay, I've got a ladder leaning up against the wall now. And here's my point B. And I have a known velocity VB. It's kind of, it's kind of similar to my last uh, sliding rod problem, right? It's just a ladder on, against the wall. And I'm telling you a few things here. Point A, point B are the ends of my ladder. And if it's sliding down, then my A point is sliding along the ground VA like that. And I'll give you some dimensions here. I'll say that my ladder is 4 meters above the ground. This is 3 meters away from the ground. And then this LAB length of the ladder happens to be 5 meters, so it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay. And so what am I saying here? I would like to, I would give you, so let VB be negative 6J. So in other words, I'm telling you one velocity and I'm asking you what VA is. And I'm also going to ask you Maybe even the velocity at the center point here. So this is a, there's a center point of the ladder VC, and I also don't know what that is. And clearly my omega right now is also unknown. Lots of unknowns. Only one velocity is known. OK, so solution. If you did this, I'm going to set it up so that I want to figure out VA. And I'm going to say I know what VB is, and I add it to omega cross RA with respect to B. OK, that's totally fine. Right? But you'll notice that you don't know some things. So you don't know the magnitude of this, but you know direction. You don't know the magnitude of this, but you know direction. It's exactly like the problem that we had before. right? So that's pretty good. You can actually solve it the way that I did there multiple ij components making them equal. I got an easier solution for you. First, let's figure out where the instantaneous center of zero velocity is. So if this point has to go down, and I told you that a perpendicular line crosses the instantaneous center, I can draw a line perpendicular to my velocity vector straight through b. Okay? And if I happen to know the direction of another velocity, like point a, it also has a perpendicular line. Like that. And that line must pass through IC. So if two of those vectors have known directions, both perpendicular lines have to pass through my IC like that rolling wheel, I've just found my instantaneous center. Okay? And that's great because instead of doing this where I had to find I and J components and have two equations, all I have to do now is say, well, my VA has to be VA with respect to an IC which is VIC plus omega cross, uh, what is it, cross RAIC, right? Okay, and this is now zero, okay? 
and I still, still don't quite know what this guy is, but I'm gonna use VB to figure it out first. So here's my VB. VB must be equal to omega cross RBIC. And this makes it really easy now. Omega must be equal to the magnitude of VB divided by the length away from the IC. So this would be 6 meters per second divided by 3 meters is 2 radians per second clockwise this way. Okay? In other words, it was a much more direct calculation. Knowing VB, finding the IC, I immediately got to my angular velocity. I found the direction. And now everything else follows. I can easily calculate VA as well. Now VA becomes mega cross RAIC, 2 radians per second K, negative, cross with RAIC, negative 4. This is negative 2, negative 4 is plus 8, but multiplied by negative i. Negative 8i meter per second matches my direction because I know VA is moving to the left. And everything's great. And then we just have to figure out VC as well. VC is equal to, and then you choose any point that you already know. I think the most convenient now is clearly just using the IC. That just makes everything really, really easy. Um, but that just means I have to do a little bit of geometry. So I know that this is my 3, 4, 5 triangle where the ladder is. And I drew it up here because this is my IC. So here's my C point the midway, right? Okay, so this is my RC with respect to IC. It's this guy right here. And so that's like a half size 3, 4, 5 triangle. This has to be 2.5. That has to be 2. And that's a 1.5. So VC is negative 2K cross with a, uh, I guess it must be positive 1.5i, negative 2j. Negative, oh, hang on a second here. Negative i. Oh, did I do something wrong? negative 4i and negative 3j. Yep, I'm good. Okay, so negative 4i, negative 3j, if I drew that velocity vector, let me draw that again. So this is down, negative 6. This one's to the left, negative 8. And this one is negative 4, negative 3, like right like that. This is my VC. So this point in the body goes this way, this point goes down, this point goes that way, and you can just check 
that all of the perpendicular lines cut through my IC. Okay. All right. Is this starting to make a little bit more sense? Good. All right. So that's all the time that I have for today. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off and we'll start working on acceleration next class. Have a good weekend. I'll see you on Monday.